Hey everybody, what's up? 8-Bit Flashback here. I just received my Analog Mega SG today that cost me right around $210 for shipping, and I've been very excited about this since the day it was announced. A 1080p HD Sega Genesis, engineered with FPGA technology, with amazing graphics, sound, and many other awesome features, making it the best Sega Genesis ever. So the first thing I wanted to do was get a review done to share my experiences with my new console. But while working on my review, I ran into some serious issues, mainly having to do with the controllers, which are a very important part of playing video games. Right now, I can tell you from what I've tested so far, the graphics and sound are amazing, and most of the games are playing great. But when I started testing multiple controllers with one specific game that I know requires extreme D-pad accuracy, I found that the results were not good, and I couldn't get any of the controllers to work properly. And when I tested the same game on the original Genesis with some of the same exact controllers, the game played just fine. And that game is Miss Pac-Man. Now Miss Pac-Man should really be played with some sort of joystick, but it can be played with a D-pad as long as you have a decent wired controller. What I found out after testing numerous wireless controllers and wired controllers is that none of the wireless controllers work properly on the Mega SG and Sega Genesis when trying to play Miss Pac-Man. But I did find out that some wire controllers seem to work fine on the Sega Genesis. And one more thing I'd like to mention before we start testing controllers, I did test numerous different types of special cartridges, and most of them have worked just fine. But I did find out that Chinese EverDrive clones do not seem to work, but I can confirm that the official EverDrives do seem to be working just fine. And I will have a special cartridge test video coming up here soon. So here's the first controller test using the original Sega Genesis Model 1 3 button controller that's in good working condition, at least I think it is. And the problem I'm having is I cannot go up and down unless I time my move perfectly or hit the wall first. And as you can see, I'm trying very hard to maneuver up and down with no luck. And I remember playing this game back in the day with the same controller, and it played fine. So I thought possibly my controller's just broken. So I decided to try it on my Sega Genesis Model 2, and I found out it works just fine. So what does this mean? Well, the only thing that makes sense to me is there must be some sort of lag causing the timing of my D-pad input to be off. Now maybe it's something different, but I know for certain that the controller performance on my 90s Genesis is definitely better. This Pac-Man is playable on my Genesis, but not on my brand new $210 Mega SG. So needless to say, it makes me a little disappointed. And to make matters worse, I also purchased the 8-bit Do Bluetooth adapter, along with the M30 Sega-inspired Bluetooth controller. And before I could even start shooting my video, the controller stopped working. But I was able to test it a few times before it broke, and the results were pretty much the same as the three button wired Sega controller, which was not good. The 8-bit Do Bluetooth adapter is also compatible with other 8-bit Do controllers, like the SF30 Pro, which is one of my favorite controllers, but unfortunately it does not get the job done for Miss Pac-Man. And this is basically exactly how the M30 controller performed, just to give you an idea. Next up is the official Sega infrared wireless controller from the 90s, and to my surprise, the adapter fits perfect, it's just too bad it doesn't play perfect. But I did find out that if I play from only a few inches away, it kind of works, but obviously this is not practical. And if I move just a few feet away, it stops working. Now to be fair, as I mentioned before, the wireless controllers did not work on the original Sega Genesis either. And I will be testing all the same exact controllers on the Sega Genesis just to show you how those work as well. This will be the last controller I'm going to be testing on the Mega SG. This is the Hyperkin controller that came bundled with my $45 Mega Retron HD. And this is actually a pretty decent controller. But again, it's not working. So it should be pretty apparent something is off. And now I'm on to the Sega Genesis using my 8-bit Do SF30 Pro with the Bluetooth adapter. And I'm having some success actually with this controller. It works sometimes, but not all the time. And I would still consider the game unplayable using this controller. Next up is the official Sega wireless controller that uses the infrared technology. And this one, actually, I can't get it to work at all. I can't go up or down, I can just go side to side. So it's a no-go. Next up is the Hyperkin controller, and surprisingly, this has the best performance out of them all on my Sega Genesis. Now, not to confuse anyone, but the games that don't require as much D-pad accuracy for those, the wireless controllers work okay on both the Mega SG and Sega Genesis, but the fact that even wired controllers are having issues on the Mega SG with games like Ms. Pac-Man is not cool. The Mega SG is not cheap, 
and I hope there's a way to correct these issues to make the controller performance at least equal to the original Genesis. Here is the $45 Mega Retron HD, which is a much cheaper Genesis clone. And when testing Miss Pac-Man with a wired controller, guess what? It works. So I will continue to make more videos about the Mega SG, including a full review here in the near future. But until then, have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.